Welcome to my very short recap of Game 5 of the 2023 FIDE World Chess Championship. This time, Jan Napomniachi had the white pieces and Ding Li Ren had the black pieces. In this game, we got the Rui Lopez, which is, of course, this position. Both players followed well-known master games out to about move 10, but by this point, the master's database starts to get pretty slim. Actually, about... Here. There's only two games left in the database, and now there's only one, and it was a game with Anish Giri and Ali Reza Feruja back in 2022. They played two more moves from that game, and then here there was a totally new move. In that older game, Anish played knight to a3. Jan plays bishop to g5 in this game. And so now they're in totally new territory on move 12. The interesting thing to me is that neither player, according to the game review, had any inaccuracies or blunders or mistakes all the way out. to move 26, which is here. The whole time, White has had a very slight advantage. As you can see, the evaluation bar moving slightly, Stockfish is trying to figure out who has the advantage here, and it says Jan has nearly a half a point of advantage. And here, Ding Li Ren plays an inaccuracy. Stockfish wants him to move the queen back, but instead he moved the queen forward slightly, and Jan responds with an inaccuracy of his own. The computer wanted him to play queen to f3, but instead he played queen to g4. And that brings the evaluation back to nearly zero. And the next several moves are not counted as inaccuracies or mistakes by either player, but it's at some point you start to see the evaluation bar creep up and it's about right here. Already it's at about plus 1.3 even though none of those moves were counted by the game, re game review as a problem. In fact, before we get to any mistakes or blunders, we're on move 37 and already Stockfish shows Jan with well over plus one advantage. 1.5, 1.6 depending on where Stockfish settles or how long you let it run. And here is where Ding Li Ren was supposed to play queen to d7 to maintain Jan's plus 1.5 advantage. But instead, he took that pawn. And I don't understand exactly why that's so bad. I think it has something to do with the fact that this h pawn can now pass. It looks like that spot is protected by Ding's rear g pawn, but it turns out to not be because now there's two attackers on this. The only way to defend that is to move this f pawn. The queen can't defend it alone because the knight and the rook are both pointed there. But it turns out that that's a really bad move to play the f pawn here. And I'm not sure that I understand exactly why other than it lets the queen point back there and somehow lets this pawn by. I think if I understood it, Ding probably would have understood it too, and he didn't. He was clearly having trouble here. His time was running really low, and I believe it's on move 40 where they get the extra time. And here he was down to just a couple of seconds when he played his uh, 40th move, which was queen to e7 check. He only had a few seconds left there before he got his extra time. But already, Jan has a plus five advantage. And the game goes on from here with neither player changing this evaluation much. It stays at around plus four, plus five for several more moves. They get out to move 48 and Ding realizes he's lost and resigns. I think that the reason here is that this pawn can't be stopped, but I'm not entirely certain. I think this bishop cannot get around to guard that promotion square in any way. If it tries to go around this way, you lose this pawn, I think. And I don't, I don't know how important it is about this pawn. Maybe the king can defend that one. I'm really not sure. I just know that here Stockfish shows Jan with an advantage of plus nine. Ding knew it and resigned. The really surprising thing to me is that we've now had three decisive games in only five so far in this World Chess Championship. Normally there are a bunch of draws and only one or two decisive games that end up giving one player the victory at the end of the tournament, but here there's only been two draws and three decisive games. Jan Napomniachi is a full game ahead already, but as we know, Ding can bounce back. He's done it once before. Let's see if he can do it again. I'm excited to see how this turns out. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.